in your house. <laughs> I have I have such bad chest anxiety. It's, it's I can just schedule my exam at circuit. Oh, y'all have a quiz today in physics, huh? Without the word bank. Without the word bank. Without the word bank. Okay, so let's go over the objectives. The objectives of endometrial carcinoma. The risk factors are uh, unopposed or too much estrogen. Obesity, nulliparity. What is nulliparity? No, no pregnancy ever. Late menopause. What does late menopause mean? After menses. Yeah, but that's not what it means. That's what menopause means. Say I didn't go into menopause until I was in my 60s. That's considered late menopause. That's what they're talking about. After 52, I think so. But if I don't go through menopause until I'm in my 60s, yeah. that's late for yeah. menopause to happen. Yeah. So that causes endometrial cancer. Okay? Uh, and tamoxifen. Breast cancer. cancer. Not cancer, breast cancer. Those are all going to be considered uh, risk factors. What about the imaging appearance? What is endometrial cancer going to look like? Mm -hmm. uh, what? No. It's going to look heterogeneous. It's going to be hypervascular. It's going to be very thick and inhomogeneous. Also complex. Inhomogeneous. Uh, what's the prognosis? Pretty good. If you catch it early enough, it's pretty good. It's a hundred percent. You know, if they catch it early enough. What is the difference between a lyomyoma and a lyomyosarcoma? Lyomyoma is a cancer of the fibroids. Lyomyoma is a fibroid. It's a fibroid, also called a myoma. Okay, they're all one and the same. It's a fibroid that has turned malignant. And it's almost always intramural. Intramural. And the lion sarcoma? Sarcoma? Yeah, it happens in the sarcoma is, is a muscle. Muscle cancer. Oh, you sure? Because you can have a sarcoma anywhere in your body. So, hang on. Okay, before you go a little bit further, I have, I have a question about the endometrial carcinoma. Okay. So if you are on hormone therapy, yes. that could also be a reason why you get endometrial carcinoma. Right? If you're on the hormone therapy. Yes, it, it increases your risk because of the estrogen. It increases it because of the estrogen. But you would be taking that because your body's not producing the estrogen. Right? Correct. Okay, so women that have had a hysterectomy, okay, a total VSO, okay, so their doctors usually put them on hormone replacement therapy. My mother is um, 85 years old. She still takes hormone replacement therapy because if she doesn't take it, she gets so mean, nobody wants to be around her. <laughs> but it also increases her risk of breast cancer also because she's been on estrogen for so long, okay? Now, if she still had a uterus, it would also increase her chances of uh, endometrial cancer. But that's why she has to take hormone replacement therapy is because she doesn't have anything down there. Okay? Uh, 
risk factors <clears throat> for fallopian tubes? So the leiomyoma is uh, uh, the beginning of the cancer, or it is no, it's uh, five just the fibroid that has turned cancerous. Okay, and the leio. Uh, my sacroma is the same, but in the muscle. The, the myometrium is a muscle. She said no, the, the myosacroma? Yeah. That's the one. That is a muscle. <coughs> no, she's uh, talking about leosacroma. A real, you can have a sarcoma anywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay? You can have a sarcoma, like in your shoulder muscles, your leg muscles, your hip muscles. Is that just sarcoma or lyo? Sarcoma. The lyo myosarcoma is just uterus. The, the muscles of the uterus. Muscles of the uterus. Okay. okay. And the myometrium is considered like a muscle. Okay. Because of the type of cells that are going to uh, show up. Uh, fallopian tube. Okay. Fallopian tube carcinoma. If I have fallopian tube carcinoma, I'm going to have hydrops has another name to it, I can't remember what it is. But we call it a hydrocephalus, okay? If, because normally we do not see the fallopian tube. And if we see a fallopian tube and we have a hydrocephalus, especially on in someone my age, 55 and up, we have to always consider that it's gonna be a carcinoma. What's the disease process and imaging characteristics for cervical cancer? Cervical cancer. We have a pap smear once a year, okay? What they do is they open up your vagina with a speculum and they take a, like, a, they clean it with betadine. So it's a nice clean specimen. And then take like a little tiny spatula and they take some, they scrape some cells off of your cervix and send it to the lab. Okay, that's what we have. A pap smear. Anybody that is sexually active has to start their pap smears once a year. Okay? If you have cervical dysplasia, then those can be considered precancerous cells and you'll come back every six months or every 90 days. And then you'll check on that. If it doesn't clear up after a couple of routine visits, then they will do a cone biopsy, where they go and they take that little piece out. And then they'll send all of that tissue to the lab to see how deep those dysplastic cells go on the internal os. I mean on the external os. <laughs> okay, genetic makeup of a persistent trophoblastic uh, disease. One egg, one sperm, no inner cell mass. Okay, how many chromosomes is that one going to have? 46. 46, okay. Two sperm, one egg, no inner cell mass. How many chromosomes or is that one going to have? 69. 69. 23, 23, and 23. So it would be 69 XXX. So it has a triploid. Okay. Is it cause it? X, 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 or X, Y, Y, because that's two. Yeah, so. Uh, it could be an XXY, it could be an X, X, uh, it could be an XXX, XXY, or XYY. 
Yeah. Even the yeah. two. That's the very last Oh, okay. No, that's just all the possibilities. Which one? She's asking me if I was by her then I was cleaning that. No. Yeah. That's just chromosome 21. So it should be on the chromosome. Yeah. So the trisome, you have three or you have three sets of chromosomes. That's not compatible with the eyes. And that's what gestational trophoblastic diseases. It's not compatible to life. Okay? Yeah. With gestational trophoblastic disease, you can have a complete or an incomplete. Okay? You can also develop cancer, a choriocarcinoma, from gestational <laughs> trophoblastic disease. You can also develop cancer where those trophoblastic cells went haywire years later, like five years later. Still like five, seven okay. years later. So, a little story. I have a niece. Uh, both of her parents are weirdos. <laughs> so, she pretty much raised herself. She went, as soon as she was old enough in, to go into the army, she went into the army. She won the Silver Star. She, she's only the second woman in history to do it. They offered her all kinds of stuff. A movie deal, sunglasses, Oakley sunglasses named after her. They took her to the NATO convention. They offered her a position at West Point. She didn't take any of those. All she wanted to do was to get married and have a family. That's all she wanted out of life. So, of course, since she was the, the sweetheart of the Army, they got her out, you know, because they didn't want her to, anything to happen to her because she's in the history books now. Wow. So, she got pregnant, okay? She had a partial molar, okay? So she had that removed. She had, uh, since she's RH negative, she had the Rogam shot. That's supposed to protect your baby later on. So for your second pregnancy. But she got pregnant too soon and her baby didn't talk till he was almost five. Okay? Then she immediately got pregnant again. That baby developed hydrops. And so she had to go through infusions once a month, intrauterine transfusions for the baby. All because of the molar pregnancy. Then it has, it has complications from that time on has been. And so this last one, the doctor said, no, we're not going through this again. I'm gonna tie your tubes. So the, the trophoblast, I mean, it's real, it's serious. You know, it could affect your your future children. It could affect you because it can also give you cancer. Okay. So endometrial cancer, it is the most common <clears throat> gynecological cancer in the United States. Obesity, nulliparity, never been pregnant, late menopause. I didn't go through menopause until I was in my 60s. Um, polyps, uh, family history, or unopposed estrogen. What does unopposed estrogen mean? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 over the No. I mean, uh, anybody can take it without a prescription? No. From no. Too much estrogen. Yeah, too much estrogen. Your estrogen is out of control. It's unopposed. It's just another word of saying it's funky. You know, there's no, there's nothing regulating the amount of estrogen that your body's putting out. It's putting out too much estrogen. Okay? That's what unopposed means. Predisposing factors of endometrial cancer is uh, 
hereditary uh, breast cancer because you're on tamoxifen and tamoxifen does what to the endometrium? It has too much estrogen, so uh, it gives me endometrial hyperplasia. Okay, birth control pills. Birth control pills are going to regulate my cycle. Okay, so if my body can't do what it normally does and is controlled from outside sources, then that's going to raise my um, chances of developing cancer and smoking. Now, when we see it, we, we can only suggest they can't tell until they do a histology workup on it, meaning lab. That they go to the lab and they'll find out what type of cancer is inside my 